right? So here's my object. I have a piece of aluminum that has a hole drilled through it. And this piece of aluminum is about four inches by four inches. And the diameter of this hole is, is about two inches. So if I look at the potential views I can have of this thing, it's pretty clear that this is the view that shows me the most about this object. So this is the view I would choose to be my front view, front view or my principal view. And then I would rotate that 90 degrees to get a top view. And the way you do that, again, is you go up to your top edge right up here and you rotate that toward you and you come around 90 degrees and this will be your top view. Now, if you want to go back to your front view, you would rotate it the opposite of that to bring it back to the front view. So here we're back at the front, front view. If I want to get the right side view, I would go to the right side view and I would rotate the object 90 degrees like that. Okay. So when we bring it back to this view right here, we're back to our principal view. Now one thing we, uh, that I wanted to mention about rotating 90 degrees is when we rotate this 90 degrees, what we wind up with is what's called an orthogonal view of this thing because the view that we're seeing from our right side when we look straight in here is at a 90 degree angle to this plane right here. And whenever your line of sight comes straight in like that and is perpendicular to the plane, we say that you're orthogonal to that plane. Now, we could also, another term that could be used for that is called being normal to the plane. All right. So I'm going to come back to this view right here because this is my principal view. This is what I'm going to sketch first, and then I'm going to figure out how to get my other views from there. So I'm going to start by making a sketch of the front view. So I'm going to use the descriptive geometry method again. So I'm going to draw a four inch by four inch square. Now I'm not drawing it full scale. I've, obviously I've scaled this down. This is smaller. Then I'm going to add my hole that goes through that part. I'm just going to sketch a hole in there like that. It's not perfect, but that's okay. I'm going to add a center mark, which is a little plus right there in the center of that. And then I'm going to have a gap and I'm going to bring a line out past the edge. We want to bring these lines out past the edge about a quarter of an inch. So that's 0.25 inches. And if you're familiar with the metric system, we would extend this out about six millimeters. I'll have another gap over here and then I'm going to extend this line out, a gap here, extend this line down a gap here and extend this line up. And so this is my center mark right here. And altogether, we could refer to that as the center lines for that hole. All right. Now, if you remember what we did before, we drew a fold line just horizontally across like that. And what we're going to do is have our top view above that fold line. We can come over somewhere and just draw a, uh, a vertical line like that. This is also a fold line, and so that means our right side view is going to be over here on this side of the fold line. And starting at this corner right here, we can add a 45 degree miter line. All right. The next step that I would do, well, first off, let me just say that this is going to be our front view. This is going to be where our side view will be and our top view will be up here. And again, this is referred to as the frontal view, the frontal projection plane over here. This is the profile projection plane would be over here. And this is called the horizontal projection plane. All right, so here's what I would do next. I would go to this side right over here and that we consider that a feature of the front view. And I would draw a light construction line straight up from there. I would go to the right side of the front view, and I, that's also a feature. I would lightly construct a line going straight up. I'm, I would go this top edge. I would lightly draw a construction line into this quadrant over here, go to this bottom edge, and project that across like that. OK, now I already know from you know, using my imagination that if, if I start up here and I rotate this toward me, 
that what I see is pretty much a rectangular top view. And so what I would do is just choose a point and draw a straight line across like that. And then I would go up the thickness of that object. And then I would come across like this. And I would connect that. And so there's where my top view fits in. Now, if we use the miter line to help us create the right side view, here's what we would do. We would go to this front edge of the top view, project a light line across until it crosses the miter line, project a light line across until it crosses the miter line there, go to that point where it crosses and draw a construction line straight down like this, go where it crosses over here and draw a construction line straight down like that. All right. Our right side view is going to fit right between those construction lines, just like that right there. All right. So I have my top view, I have my right side view, and I have my front view. Now my views are not finished yet because I need to deal with this hole because the hole in the right side view and the hole in the top view is going to be represented by some hidden lines and some center lines. So let me show you how you put that hole in. Go to the front view and go to the very top of the hole, which we call the quadrant right there, and draw a light construction line over into your right side view. And then go to the bottom quadrant and also draw a light construction line across. Go to your center line and draw a light construction line across like that. Do the same thing in your top view. Go to your quadrant, draw a light construction line straight up, Go to your center line, draw a light construction line straight up. Go to your right quadrant here on your circle and draw a light construction line straight up. All right. Now, the top of the hole comes from this point right here. So as we come across, when we get to the front edge of our view here, we're going to start drawing a dashed line, which represents the top edge of that hole. And that dashed line we're drawing right there is called a hidden line. So the top of the hole will be represented with a hidden line. If we go to the bottom of the hole and project it across, we will have a hidden line here as well. And because a hole is a cylinder in shape, what we want to define for that is the center axis of that cylinder. The center axis of that cylinder lies on this line right here. So to draw that center line, here's what we'll do. We'll come out about a quarter of an inch. We'll draw a line across and stop. We'll put a little gap and then a short line, another little gap, and then we'll come out about 0.25. This line right here is a center line. Okay. We're going to do the same thing up here. We'll go to our quadrant, project up. We're going to darken the left edge of the hole. We'll find out where the right edge of the hole is and put some hidden lines in for that. So of course this is, this is hidden. This line over here is also hidden. And then we want to come in and come out about a quarter inch, put a stop, put a little gap, draw a short little dash and bring this down like that. There's the center line going through for our hole. So what we have now is our front, our top, and our right side view of the hole. Uh, this technique we're using where we're projecting these points across, that technique is called orthographic projection. And a minute ago, I said that this view here, because we're looking in at this plane on the side right here and that we are uh, at a 90 degree angle to that, where our line of sight is perpendicular to that, I said that was orthogonal. Well, you can see ortho, so the root word of orthogonal and orthographic, they share the same root. Okay, so it means that you're perpendicular to the plane, your line of sight is perpendicular to the plane. All right, so we're using orthographic projection. Uh, most of this stuff was at least written down for the first time by a guy named Gaspard Monge. He was a French mathematician. Uh, he wrote a book called 
uh, descriptive geometry, except because it was French, it was called geometrie descriptive. All right, so uh, this is how you do multi-view drawings where you apply orthographic projection and descriptive geometry. And so, you know, you can simplify it from here, but this is really the, the core of how people first started drawing multi-views and how they were visualizing those multi-views. And I think that's a good idea for us to kind of think the same way. Now, remember I said this, this line here is called a fold line and this line here is called a fold line? That's because I want you to imagine that we have a glass box like this and that this line here, that these lines here are hinged. And then we take this object right here and we put it inside of that glass box. So there's the hole coming through. Then we project our front view out onto this plane right here. Well, this is our frontal plane. And that's what we're seeing right here. We project these points out onto the side view over here. This is called our profile plane. And it will have our hidden lines going through and our center line. And then we project up to this projection plane here and our top view is going to land right in here someplace and it will have hidden lines and a center line going through it. So I need to add my center lines over here. And so when I call this a fold line, I want you to imagine that you've taken this glass box and you've taken the front view and then you've folded this view up so that it's above and then you folded this view in this direction so that it's over here on the side. And uh, that's why we call those fold lines, that's why we call this a frontal plane, a profile plane, and this a horizontal plane because you can see it runs horizontally. All right, that's a pretty good introduction to descriptive geometry. You can thank this guy right here. If you ever get a job doing this for a living, thank Gaspard Monge. <laughs>